So current here, this is inductor L. So we assume that we have a voltmeter measure is VL. Okay, VL. So now we start with something like this. If our current flow in this direction, so this one is our voltage. Okay, the voltage here is positive. So again, we start with something like this. A, B, C, D. Okay, A, B, C, D. We're going to use Kirchhoff law again one more time. Okay, Kirchhoff law. So Kirchhoff second law says that the total change in potential difference must equal to zero. All right. Now, we start from A to B. A to B. So we have negative V. Okay, negative V. But the problem here is when you come to CD, okay, when current move like this, see or not, when current move in this direction, okay, so the inductor or the solenoid will build up a magnetic field. This magnetic field will pass through itself. Okay, so you have external current go through the coil. The coil create a magnetic field, and that magnetic field cut through the coil itself. And according to Faraday's law, it become a generator. So now this one will become, uh, will produce a current that go backward. So we call that one the back current. Okay, the back current. Since it have back current. So that means the current flow in this direction, so we we'll call this one positive side, this one negative, right? Okay. So how much back current is being produced? Okay. So the the back current or the back EMF. Okay, the back current or the back EMF. So we use this one here. Yeah? Back EMF. So our back EMF is given by this formula. Okay, it's given by the magnitude is given by this. So we look at this one. Uh it is uh L d i d t okay l d i d t see or not l d i d t so now we have the uh the equation already so that back current is flowing in that direction so we have positive negative here so that means we come to the negative terminal so we plus this one uh back current equal to zero so now our back current if you look look at this okay or our V is equal to uh, back current. But our back current is equal to what? This one, right? L di dt. So what we need to do is to differentiate this function. Okay. So L and I naught sine omega t. So differentiate this one is easy, isn't it? So L, you take out the I naught and differentiate this one. You got cosine omega t and omega take the omega to the front omega l i naught cosine omega t so now if you look at this equation now okay you have to compare with the current here you have to compare with the current here and this current equation i will call now equation number okay here we read number five so this is our equation number six now then the equation number six and this is number seven so again we see this is cosine that is sine isn't it so they are not the same so we have to compare them you have to change this one so that it looks like sine so how okay how now or you can change the sign to look like cosine also the same no problem isn't it so we can do like this uh oh you just change this one easier okay this one if according to what we have learned just some mathematical this one positive cosine omega t is equal to sine omega t plus pi over 2 right okay so now v is equal to omega l i naught sine omega t plus pi over 2 isn't it okay so here you compare with this one okay compare with i equal to i naught sine omega t so why can you tell me about that what's the conclusion for that right what's the conclusion the conclusion is Okay, the conclusion is V is leading I by pi over 2 radian, right? Or you can also say I is lagging V by pi over 2. Isn't it? Right? It's the same like the one before, alright? So now the next one is we are going to manipulate this thing here. Then this is the one that we're going to go to manipulate. So from number seven, okay, we have V is equal to V naught, okay, cosine omega t. What is our V naught? Our V naught is equal to omega L I naught. 
now again if you move this one over here v over i is going to give you resistance and this resistance is called chi l and this one is inductive reactant okay inductive reactant so our chi l is equal to omega l or 2 pi f l right so that is our new equation for this part here which is equation number x okay i forgot to tell you this one and this one have the same unit of ohms just like resistor except they depend on frequency f so now if i plot the graph of chi l against frequency i'm gonna got uh, i'm gonna get a straight line okay i will get a straight line all right so there's a relationship between them all right now next one is the phaser diagram okay the phaser diagram for inductor l again we start something like this okay but you already know just now the voltage is leading right so now our current is in the same position okay same position here i l so because your voltage is leading it must be in front okay here okay and this is our i uh, v l okay v l and the angle here is 90 degree okay 90 degree which is pi over 2 this one okay leading this one by pi over 2 so that means our phaser diagram is actually rotating anti-clockwise okay anti-clockwise right so that is our uh separate okay connection of resistor inductor and capacitor in ac circuit okay in ac circuit all right so this is our patch four okay our patch four now next one is we're going to combine everything together and become a series circuits we call that one rcl or rlc okay rcl series connection or series circuit but only in ac okay in ac circuit yeah so then we have something that looks like this we have a ac power supply with power supply v equal to v naught sine omega t and then we have three components here okay we have three components and that component are resistor capacitor and inductor okay rcl so this is r this is c this is l each of them have their own bot meter okay each of them have their own bot meter all right okay Volt meter, volt meter, volt meter. This one measuring VR, VC, and VL, right? And their current is I, okay? And now, if you look at that carefully, they are all in series, right? According to theory of circuit, anything in series, all the components will have the same current, or at least the same charge, okay? Same current. So, uh, for R, resistor capacitor l we don't have to worry about current the current will be the same okay the current will be the same now we are going to get something else okay something like uh we already know something like the uh, v r is equal to i r and then v c is equal to r chi c and then our v l is equal to i chi l and we know the formula already for chi c is 1 over 2 pi f c and our chi l is equal to 2 pi f l now what happens if we combine everything we cannot simply just sum them up not that easy we have to use phaser diagram okay so this is our phaser diagram okay this is our phaser diagram the initial phaser diagram okay all the phaser must go in now yeah so our current now because they have the same current now you remember why we draw all the current in the same direction now all the time here okay so this is our current okay i okay the current i now we have three other uh uh vector one are phaser sorry okay so this one is a phaser for the vr right the vr and then we have another one okay 
the phaser for the capacitor okay the phaser for the capacitor this one is a vc and then we have a phaser for our inductor vl both are 90 degree this is pi over 2 lagging behind i this one is pi over 2 leading in front i now why i choose this one longer than that uh well uh it's up to our choice but uh, this way is much easier but if you choose this one longer you still get the same answer okay now what happens when you have two vector pointing in the opposite direction what happens next is we're going to combine them okay we're going to combine them so meaning that your i is still the same here okay i i actually no function here the i here so now we only have two more vector left one is for the vr now how about this one you have this one minus this one you have something sh slightly shorter right and this value here is actually equal to vl minus vc okay vl minus vc for this shorter vector now all right okay so what happened next okay what happened next is we're going to combine these two okay we have to combine these two okay we have to combine them so how do we combine them we combine them using something that is called Pythagoras theorem. Very easy, isn't it? So now we have a deeper blue. Okay, deeper blue, this color now. Looks quite the same, right? So I might as well use green. Okay. Alright, now green color. This one, okay. How to get this? So we assume that, okay, the angle between this one, the orange and the green one, is called the file. Okay, the file. This is a phase angle. The phase angle between current and the uh, voltage altogether. So what is our this one? This one our voltage here. So you have to use a little bit of uh, mathematics here. This one I will call the V prime. Okay, the V prime. So the V prime here. Okay, this one is equal to V R square plus this one and everything square root, right? Everything square root. So our V prime. Okay. Our V prime is going to become uh, square root of V R square plus the whole thing here V L minus V C square square root okay square root okay now one more thing is since they have the same current isn't it they have the same current so since the same current we put in the current here the current here is I okay this V prime is a total voltage so total voltage you need a total okay something so i this one is z v ohm's law v equal to i r okay v equal to i r so your z is a total resistance and reactant we call this one impedance okay so we have this square root okay we take out the i square this one now is r square plus what happened here is you have i chi l minus i chi c right now what happened is you can actually take out okay take out the i from both sides okay so you take out the i here this one is the i z this one is your i you take out i so now you have i okay you have i under the square roots and here is r square plus chi l minus chi c square bracket square root take out cancel the i so we have something called uh, z is equal to r square plus chi l minus chi c square and everything square root okay so this is our equation to calculate the total resistance okay so z is called the impedance okay which is the total resistance and reactant in the RCL series circuit okay so that is our equation number nine okay equation number nine okay and one last one okay we have one last uh, equation last equation is called the uh, power factor okay the power factor the power factor is this symbol okay this symbol okay so now how do you get our power factor here we already know this one is called v prime our v prime is equal to i z okay i z 
So our power factor is to tell us how efficient is our house uh, electrical network. Okay, how efficient is the electrical network, especially you have uh, inductor and capacitor around. So our power factor is given by cosine phi. If you look at this diagram, cosine this one is equal to V R over uh, V prime. Okay. And this one is equal to IR and this one is IZ. So what we have here is our cosine file is equal to R over Z. This is one of the formula that we can use to calculate our uh, cosine factor. All right. Other than that, we can also use tangent file. Your tangent file then will be this one, which is VL minus VC over uh, VR. All right. So the tangent file become this one all have their i right i i i so finally we end up chi l minus chi c over r okay over r so that is our uh, equation which actually uh, give us the ability to calculate the efficiency of our electrical network okay so that is our AC circuits very difficult good luck okay.